This video is about our first steps and generally what Kambanda is. So Kambanda is a newly incarnated religion that's been public for about 100 years. It's based on South American, African, and European witchcraft and necromancy through Brazil, brought over by Spanish and Gypsies, which mixed among the indigenous people there. Ashe, which is your own life force, is used to empower objects, herbs, candles, and in drawing sigils or symbols. So you must have a way of cultivating this energy. We first began by looking at several African diaspora paths and decided to get a reading from a Babalao of Ifa, who is also a Santo of Santeria Lukumi as well as a Yaya of Kimbanda to determine what way to go. Kimbanda is similar to Palo Mayombe in that both come from the Congo, but Kimbanda has European ceremonial high magic influences, most notably the Goetia, and other European influences as it traveled to Brazil. We also had an interest in Haitian voodoo. Kevin had a voodoo teacher of Cuban descent, and we both had experiences with the Loa, who are the spirits of voodoo. However, voodoo initiation must be done in Haiti. The Babylon so far has only read Kevin, saying he is born to Orisha worship, which includes Ifa Santeria Lukumi or Ocha Pass. This means his vibration is more attuned to this, but that he can still practice other things. In general, this path works more with life-giving energy, the Ashe. The Odun is a geomantic divination of shells along with cowries that can divine, among other things, to ask Ifa to read your karmic past and current placement in the cosmos energetically and within your ancestral line and destiny for a path reading. They can tell you many things about your life and give spiritual advice. They can tell you who your Orisha are around you, but your personal Orisha is read usually at initiation. An Odun may need to be performed to clear up energetic things or introduce yourself to the spirits or give an offering for protection. There are various individual reasons why according to your Odun, which may include offerings of food or animals that are called Ebos or Admus. Depending on the house, especially in North America, they might also use elements of Brujera, witchcraft, including the use of the spirit Santisma Morte, who is Saint Death. Palo, Santeria, or Loa have you... Um, Palo or Santeria houses may have loa or unique house spirits. Each house has a slightly different tradition, but share the basic common elements of that path with the other houses. Palo is more of a path of necromancy, or working with the dead or morts, mortos, as well as with the Inkisi Kongani spirits. Inkisi are synchronized with the Orisha in Palo, but not in Kambanda. They also use the Orishas more and more in Umbanda. There are therefore gods in Palo, but the Inkisi are not gods in Kimbanda. However, in Kimbanda, they may often use the Orisha names to explain the energy or personality of the Inkisi. To repeat Kimbanda, the Inkisi are not the gods. Inzombi is the ultimate creative source, viewed as masculine energy but not a man, as woman is the manifesting energy. The gods in Kimbanda are also of the three greater Kimbanda kingdoms out of seven, Ishu Mayorel of the astral, Ishu Rey the king, and Maria Padilla Reina, who manifests as Pombagira legions in the lesser kingdoms. As well, the gods and goddesses are the queen and king, Ishu and Pambagira, of the seven lesser Kimbanda kingdoms. We were then read by a Yaya of Kimbanda. We are both accepted by the spirits. This must be done in any African tradition except voodoo, where you cannot be initiated. They also must accept you as priest or priestess in later initiations for all African traditions, or you cannot progress if you desire to do so. When one tradition may accept you, another may not. It is traditional to pay thousands of dollars for certain initiations and or fetishes like mysteries of certain spirits and their ingangas. Their ingangas are their cauldrons where the spirits live. 
It is something that is worked for and not done on a whim or all at once, and it is leveled over years. The readings cost us $25 each, a bargain in my opinion. My reading was very positive. Kaviunga spoke for me, who is the king of the dead, diseases, healing, and the earth. Matamba, the goddess synchronized with the Orisha Oya, was also around me a lot. She is associated with lightning and is a warrior who commands the dead. This is something that I did not tell the Yaya, that I had been having experiences with her and her type energy. She pointed out defects in my personality of things to watch out for and work on and possible consequences. There were offerings that needed to be done, which usually consist of food, liquor, candles, or a cigar. In my case, I needed to perform two rituals to Kavyunga one of which was an offering left at the cemetery after being charged in a specific way for blessings, good fortune, and health, which consisted of rice and beans. I also found out in the reading that my Ishu and Pamagira mother and father are the kingdom of the crossroads, also called in Cruz Aladas, the queen and king of the crossroads. Personal spirits are read later at initiation, such as in Kisi or further lower issues. My reading also means that I'm a witch and a spiritualist, and that I must receive all the Congo initiations. I also must receive the Aje spirits and their Inganga or Caldero, which is a spirit cauldron housing unit or hub. I will explain who these spirits are in a later time in more detail, but they are like elemental witches. The crossroads open and close paths, roads, and doors. They rule places that are transitional and liminal, the magical mercurial in between. The crossroads are where a lot of packs and magic are made. The crossroads are significant because Ishu is the keeper of the crossroads, and structurally, Kambanda is based on his cosmology, such as Legba is first called to open the doors to other spirits in Wudu. Crossroads are responsible for hexing and unhexing, healing unions, progress, advice, defeating enemies, freedom, and clairvoyance, among other things. Kevin's reading from the Yaya was a double Odu, which is significant. This also occurred with his reading with the Babalao. Whereas the Congo spirits recognized me, they were not familiar with him. He therefore had to introduce himself in one of his workings that was prescribed. Matamba also spoke for him and Nkosi Mukumbe, who is synchronized with Zarabranda or Ogun. He is a road opener associated with a uh, railroad. A uh, martial force of war, weapons, iron, progress, and fire. Kevin is also a powerful witch and medium. His reading was also ominous and a little more difficult. We had 21 days in total to complete our workings or start over and face consequences related to our readings. Our days of blowing out candles were over, we were told. We should only snuff them out when needed. We make a solid team together, and his mother and father are the queen and king Ishu and Pambagira of the forest, called Desmatas. Most Osanista workers with Osain come from this kingdom. Osain is responsible for healing all the magical secrets and preparation of herbs, healings, and poisons, among many other things, and the palos, sticks, which must soak in Omero's oils and herbs to work with them. Women cannot typically receive Osain until they have seized menstruating, and therefore must get these products from an Osainista. I saw Ishu des Matas in the forest canopy across a field. When I pointed him out, Kevin also saw him. He directed us to a stream where we could leave some offerings to another spirit who is associated with streams. He appeared as a bovine, brown, horned headed person with a flat face and white markings on other side of his muscle. Before this, we also had to take 12 red roses to the forest to his Ishu and Pamagura of the forest as requested by them. Kevin drew their symbol and made the mounds of dirt needed while a friend and I harvested oyster mushrooms. During our rituals we performed, we saw some amazing things. For Kabyanga, we saw the earth shift. With my back against the tree, we were looking at the offering and a segment of the dirt on the ground rotated like an underground vortex. Suddenly, a black slug appeared out of nowhere to inspect the offering and rolled over the tea lights. We found out later Kavyanga is he who moves the earth, and part of the original offering to him was rolling the animals in the dirt in his rights. The slug was likely an 
emissary to accept or make worth the offerings in the feeding the earth ritual. It was almost unreal as we both saw it. The slug eats decay and aerates the soil. As well, there was communication with the spirit and divination in the candles to be had. I also saw someone wearing an African wooden mask in the other ritual, but it was unlikely to be him as he wears a raffia or a straw covering. For Nkosi Mukumbe's ritual, we were directed to a more suitable, less public working industrial location by the spirit himself. As we were looking for a crossroad of two railroads, or a railroad and a road, for the working associated with him. Every place we found was distracting or prevented us as it was too public. Kevin heard a voice saying, keep looking, I will provide a place, which we found later driving down the road. I parked to walk back to one place, but where I ended up parking was the best area as there was another railroad track that led down an alley-like area where two railroads were crossed. The location was where men could not readily see us, but they were working on and fabricating trains. When we walked back to the car, not looking back, I found two railroad spikes that I felt Kevin should have, so I gave it to him. Yaya said to Kevin to hold on to it for when he makes the Nganga of Nkosi. As well, in my uh, later entry, Kevin had a dream about Nkosi Mukumbi. We were glad to have completed these tasks along with a nine-day African spiritual bath that was prescribed consisting of basil, mint, and goat milk with a lit purple candle.